Hi, on today's video, I want to show you how to install this Cat6 network faceplate. I hope you enjoy the video and find it worthwhile. Without further ado, let's jump in. In my last video, I showed you how I installed an access point in this office. Um, if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, since then, the room's all been decorated. It's looking really nice and really happy with it. Uh, but before I put this network cabinet back in place and get it up and running, I thought it'd be a really good opportunity to get rid of this old brush entry plate and put in something a bit more professional. So uh, putting in this Cat6 entry plate will make maintenance a lot easier going forward and it'll just look a lot better. Uh, but before we get into that, what I will do is I'll do an overhead view and I'll show you the Cat6 wiring. So let's jump in. Before we go ahead and install our Cat6 faceplate, I wanted to do a quick overview of the wiring just to show you a close up of what it should look like. Um, I will show you the actual installation process, but um, you're going to get a better view this way. Okay, cool. So if we strip off about 40 mil of the, of the sheathing, same as before, splay out our cables. Just trim that out. Always be very careful not to nick any of your pairs when you're doing this. Let's get rid of that. And now if I bring you down a little closer. So all I'm doing now is I'm separating our pairs. Is the last pair there. So all our pairs are separated. Got your white orange, white green green, white blue blue and white brown brown. There we go. And let's see if I can do this on camera. It's a lot easier when you're doing it and it's against the wall and it is like this but so let's start with brown at the top and work our way down. So your entry, there we go. So that's brown. White brown. Blue and then white blue and then from the bottom to the top orange white orange and then green and last but not least white green now, I'm going to use our punch down tool. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but so I don't know if you can see that, but we're going to use our punch down tool to push down our cabling into the metal contacts and just trim off the excess. A little bit noisy.
go. So if I offer that up. So that is our cable terminated. And so if I turn it over, now being dark, it might be a little tricky to see, but if I use that there, there is your RJ45 socket. So basically we've just created a female connector. So all of our cables coming through our wall into our back box will all terminate into each one of there. And from there, you can label them. So you can label them as whatever they might be. So there might be an access point, there might be a TV, an Xbox, a PC, an IP phone, whatever you've got. So yeah, makes things a lot more professional and it's so much easier when it comes to maintenance. If you're troubleshooting or chasing cables to find out which is rogue or which one isn't working, when they're labeled like this, um, you know exactly what you're dealing with. So, so much easier than my um, brush entry face plate that I've been using for far too long. So now I've shown you that, I will um, put the camera down to the wall and we'll terminate these cables. So, let's get rid of all these old toolless keystone jacks. I'll probably keep them actually, because you can always reuse them. I've also taken the liberty of wiring all my uh, I'm also taking the liberty of labeling all my cables so I know what's what to make things a little easier for myself. So same as before taking off about 40 mil of our sheath and some masking tape there. Again, just splaying out all our cables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do all of these first. Get this bit out of the way. I'll put a link in the description to all the tools I've used in case anyone is interested. So that is all of our cables, sheaths trimmed and splayed out. I'm gonna put in our back box now. So one. Sky or satellite TV for those across the pond. So now we've got our back box in place, we have splayed out our cables. We're gonna terminate them into our CAT6 modules.
So as you can see, all of our CAT6 cables have been terminated into the back of our CAT6 modules. A little tip, there's little um, hooking points for some uh, cable ties and it's always advised to use them just to keep your cables safe and so none of them pop out. Not so much relevant in a house build, but if you were in a commercial environment, say an office, and someone was doing a cable pull behind the walls, you might find that someone might end up catching on your cables and these could pop out. So always use your little um, hooking points for your cable ties. Um, I've already taken the liberty of using my peak tester terminals to connect to the other end of all these cables. So we're gonna go ahead now and test the cables. This is always a nerve-wracking part because you never know if you've done it right or not. So, here's our first one. Excellent, one down, four to go. <laughs> So that I believe is a Sky TV or satellite TV if you like. That's a DSL. I can't terminate, I can't test this one here. So if you can see, this one here actually is an extended BT socket. Um, I'm gonna show you in another video how I did this. Um, you can't test that because that basically is two pairs that go into the BT socket. So there's no RJ45 connects on the other end. So in another video, I'll show you how I extended this cable, which allowed me to move my uh, router into this cabinet. So I'll show you that in another video. But we're gonna test, this is a switch that goes up into my loft. This is the access point in this room, and then we've got another access point in the living room. So I'm gonna test these three. So fingers crossed, number two. Ah, oh, that's actually a fail. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that and see what's going on there. So that is telling me at the Atlas end, five and six are not terminated. So I'll have to test that and see what's going on. Let's test the uh, last two. So let's test the access point in this meet in this office. Yep, that's a good wire, excellent. That is a good wire, that's excellent. Right, this is our last one. Excellent. Right, I'm gonna leave you for a second while I just go and swap out the um, terminal on the other end of my loft uh, switch. So it turns out that this module here, unfortunately I hadn't punched down the cable far enough so it hadn't terminated. So I've done that and all my cables are tested well. Um, so that's it guys, that is how you saw the Cat6 faceplate. Um, yeah, give that a try if you're, uh, if you're looking to have a load of cables coming into any one room. So you can have double gang, you can have single gang. Um, you can have a variety of different face plates from, this is like a black nickel brush finish, really nice. But yeah, you can have basic plastic if they're gonna be behind the TV and you don't need to see them. Um, give that a try. Uh, so the last thing for me to do is put the network cabinet back in place, patch this all in and fingers crossed. So I thought I'd show you before I put the network cabinet back in place. These are our face plates all back on. Uh, all of our ports are labeled, which makes uh, maintenance so much more easier. Um, yeah, I think that looks really good. Really happy with how that's turned out. We'll just stand back. 
as I'm sure you'll agree. It looks so much more tidier than the uh, entry brush plate that I was previously using. So yeah, really happy with that. We'll get the network camera net back in place, patch everything in and fingers crossed.